In this video, we're going to continue working with trigonometry in geometric three-dimensional figures, and we're going to talk about right cylinders. So I really like doing cylinders. I find them to be one of the easier three-dimensional shapes. Most of you understand like a can of soup or a can of beans. Um, all of that stuff comes packaged usually in a cylindrical container. So it makes it kind of easy for students to understand how to solve these problems. Let's take a look at the example that you have on your screen. A cylindrical drum contains a stick that fits the diagonal exactly. If the radius of the drum is 5.8 centimeters and the height is 15.8 centimeters, calculate the length of the stick the angle that the stick makes with the side of the drum. So right now, the first thing we have to do is figure out the length of the stick, which is basically the diagonal that you see in red on the screen, which is right here. And as you know, if you have been watching some of the other videos on square pyramids, the longest rod problem, what we really are trying to do is create triangles within these three-dimensional figures that will help us use either the Pythagorean theorem, the trig ratio, SOHCAHTOA, sine, cosine, tangent, or law signs, sine rule, or cosine rule to be able to find these angle measures or side lengths. In this particular example, I can go ahead and create a right triangle with the diameter, which is a C, and the height of the cylinder. So right here, I have a 90 degree angle. So I do have a right triangle. I like to draw my right triangle separately. It helps me visualize exactly what it is that I am doing to avoid making any mistakes. So I know the height is 15.8. And remember they said the radius is gonna be 5.8. So I need the diameter. The diameter is twice the radius. So two times 5.8 is going to be 11.6. So that means that AC is 11.6 centimeters. Another thing to be careful with are the units. So far, we really haven't encountered problems where the units are different, but we will be seeing some of those examples. So you have to be cautious and be on the lookout that you're always with the same units. Otherwise, you're gonna have to convert. So let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem since we have a right triangle. We're going to say that 11.6 squared plus 15.8 squared is equal to AB squared. 11.6 squared is going to give me 134.56 plus 15.8 squared is 249.64. We're going to add those two together and we get 384.2 is equal to a b squared. Take the square root of both sides. So that means that 19.6 approximately is going to be the length of a b. So right now the length of the stick is approximately 19.6 centimeters. The second part of the question says the find the angle that the stick makes with the side of the drum. So right now we're going to go ahead and find the angle that the stick, which is this one right here that I'm drawing now in blue with the side of the drum. So we're going to go ahead and put theta up at the top. Now, remember, we do have a right triangle. And so I can go ahead and use the trig ratio, sine, cosine, tangent. I'm going to use the 11.6 and 15.8 from the problem because those are exact measurements. 19.6 is correct because we did it correctly, but it is a rounded answer. So I'm going to go ahead and label 11.6 opposite because it's opposite of theta and 15.8 is the adjacent. In so ka toa, which is sine, cosine, tangent, the relationship between opposite and adjacent is toa. So that means the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is 15.8. So now I go second tan, which is arc tangent of 11.6 divided by 15.8. So we're going to get that theta is the arc tangent of 11.6 divided by 15.8, 
which is going to be approximately 36.3 degrees. So this angle right here is approximately 36.3 degrees. And in case I wanted to find the other missing angle, I can just subtract 180 minus 90 minus 36.3, and that's going to give me that this bottom angle right here is 53.7 degrees. So the answer that we want here is the angle the stick makes with the side of the drum, so it's 36.3. The diagram below shows a cylinder with radius 20 centimeters. The height of the cylinder BD is 60. C is the midpoint of BD. That is super important because that means that from CD it's 30 centimeters and from BC it's 30 centimeters. So that piece of information, the fact that C is the midpoint of BD is actually very important. Calculate the values of angles X and Y. Okay, so one of the things that we can do is we can work with this bottom right triangle, which is formed from the diameter of this cylinder, which is not going to be 20, 20 is the radius. Remember that the diameter is two times the radius and here the radius is 20, so the diameter is 40. And we know that from B to C it's 30. So by doing the Pythagorean theorem, I can figure out the measure of side AC. Because we're looking for angle measures, another thing that I can do is just use trig ratio SOKATOA. So I can find this angle right here, theta. And then I know that theta and angle Y are what's called a linear pair. They add up together to equal 180 degrees. We see that those two angles are supplementary angles. Supplementary angles from geometry are two angles that add up to equal 180 degrees. So there's so many different ways that I can do this problem, quite honestly. There might be some ways right now that you're thinking that are perfectly fine to do, but we're just going to go ahead and tackle it by finding the angle right now because that'll give us y right away. So I'm going to redraw this right triangle. I told you that I love to redraw these triangles because it helps to keep us organized on exactly what it is that we are doing. There's so much information sometimes on these diagrams. By redrawing just the triangle that you're working with, you're able to clear your mind exactly on what you're doing. So right now I know that 40 is the diameter, 30 because C is the midpoint, and the entire height is 60. So according to our trig ratio sine cosine tangent, SOKATOA, I have theta, which is right here. Opposite of theta is 40, and 30 is adjacent. What connects opposite and adjacent? It's tangent. So I'm going to say that the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. That means to find theta, I have to find the arc tangent of 40 divided by 30. So we have second tan of 40 divided by 30. So that means that theta is 53.1 degrees approximately. So if theta is 53.1 degrees, then like I said, these two angles right here they form a linear pair. They add up to equal 180. So I can do 180 degrees minus 53.1 and I get 126.9 degrees. So this is going to be the measurement of angle Y. So pretty quickly, we were able to find one of these two answers. Angle Y is 126.9 degrees. Now you have to be careful because triangle ADC is not a right triangle. Clearly it is an obtuse triangle because we just found angle Y. It is not 90. It is 126.9 degrees. So now we're going to have to figure out without using SOKATOA, how can we figure out the value of X? And I can use the sign rule because I know that opposite of angle X in the triangle that you see right now in red so here's the triangle that is shaded in red opposite of x is 30. so for the sine rule i need to do the sine of x is to 30 as and i would have to use the angle 126.9 
is to AD. So I do need to find AD. I'm going to go ahead and figure out a way to do that right here in purple. I'm going to highlight the large triangle that is being formed by connecting A, D, and B. So I have triangle A, D, B. Here's A, here's D, here's B, where B, D is 60 centimeters, A, B is 40, and this is a right triangle, so I can go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem. So 40 squared plus 60 squared is equal to AD squared. I think we've had a lot of practice with Pythagorean theorem. So 40 squared plus 60 squared, put that all at once in your calculator. And that's going to give you 5,200. And then I'm going to take the square root of that to find AD. So the square root of 5,200 is about 72.1. So that means that this right here is 72.1 centimeters. So how does that help us? Well, I can now use the sine rule to be able to figure out the measurement of angle X. I am going to erase what you see on your screen right now, just because we're going to need a little bit of space to finish this problem. We're going to set up the problem as the sine of 126.9 is to its opposite side, 72.1, as the sine of x is to its opposite side, which is 30. So I'm going to cross multiply. I'm using a graphing calculator. In the graphing calculator, I can see where those exact values are, and I can bring them in as part of my answer to avoid round off error. If you're not using a graphing calculator or a calculator that allows you to go back to those previous answers, then you're going to have to do your best to round and there will be a little bit slight round off error. So your answers and mine might be a little bit off. So right now I'm going to go ahead and do the cross multiplication. I'm going to do 30 times the sine of 126.9 is equal to 72.1 times the sine of X. So I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to go 30 times the sine of I'm going to go up to find the 126.8698976 entire number that I got before I rounded, and that gives me 24. Okay, so 30 times the sine of 126.9 is about 24.0. It's equal to 72.1 times the sine of angle X. I'm going to divide by 72.1. So divided by, and again, 72.1 is a rounded answer. If you can find it, the entire thing, you're going to avoid round off error. So I found it and I'm going to get 0 0.33281179. This is equal to the sine of angle X. In the calculator, I'm going to have to press second to find the arc sine because the only time you press second or shift in the calculator when you're working with sine, cosine, tangent is when you have to find arc sine or arc cosine or arc tangent. So here I'm going to go second sine of my answer and I get 19.4 degrees. That means that angle X is 19.4 degrees and then that's going to be my final answer. Is it possible that you could have done this problem a different way? Absolutely. So instead of finding this 72.1, when you see this large purple triangle, one of the other things that I could have done in working with this purple triangle, where this diameter is 40, the height is 60, I could very well have found the measurement of that top angle. Instead of theta, I'm going to call it alpha so that we don't mistake it with the other angle that we already called theta. So in this case, I would have opposite, adjacent, so the relationship is still tangent. The tangent of alpha is opposite over adjacent. So alpha is arc tangent of 40 over 60. So in the calculator, arc tangent of 40 divided by 60. It's 33.69, so about 34 degrees, but we can put 33.69 if you'd like for now. 
So what does that tell me? The triangle that you see shaded in red, this angle is 126.9. We just found that the top angle is 33.69. Subtract them both from 180 degrees and you're going to get exactly the same answer, 19.41. So if you go ahead and do 180 degrees minus 33.69, minus 126.9, you're going to see that you're going to get 19.41, which is exactly what we ended up getting as our answer for X, 19.4. So there's multiple ways of doing and approaching the same exact problem. In all of these, you have to be able to find those relationships, those triangles. Be careful with basically assuming that an angle is a right triangle when it's not. Like in this case, Y was not a right triangle. And so there were right triangles by using the big purple one or by using the bottom one that we had used initially. So the value for angle X to answer the question is going to be 19.4 degrees. And then the value of Y we found to be 126.9 degrees. Okay, so here we have another problem. The diagram shows a cylindrical barrel of radius 1.2 meters and height 3.6 meters. A tube, DEO, is fixed into the cylinder. The tube consists of two straight parts, OE and ED. O is at the center of the base of the barrel and E lies along BC such that BE is equal to 1.4 meters. Calculate the total length of the tube. Well, thank goodness I gave you a picture because this is a lot of information. Um, we can tell from the drawing what we are trying to figure out in calculating the total length of the tube is from DE and then from EO. Okay, so our job is to figure those out. So we basically kind of can tell that we're probably going to have to do two things, two calculations, one for DE, one for EO, and then we're going to have to add them together. So let's go ahead and work with one of these at a time. I do know the radius of my cylinder is 1.2. They show it to you up here, but also at the bottom from the center to B, I know that's a radius, so this is 1.2 meters. So right now, very quickly, by using this bottom triangle, I can go ahead and set up the Pythagorean theorem. 1.2 squared plus 1.4 squared is going to equal OE squared. Put this into your calculator, 1.2 squared plus 1.4 squared, which is 3.4. So 3.4 is equal to OE squared. Take the square root of 3.4. So about 1.84 is equal to OE. So that's good because, I mean, that was pretty fast, but just using the Pythagorean theorem, we were able to do so. Another thing that we can tell they told us the entire height of this cylinder is 3.6. And we can also tell that this little piece from B to E is 1.4. So that tells me if I subtract 3.6 minus 1.4, I get 2.2. So this part from C to E is going to be 2.2. How is that helpful? Well, maybe you already found it, but we have another right triangle going this way where DE is the hypotenuse, angle C right here, you have a right angle, and 1.2 is the radius, so we're not gonna work with 1.2 because we need the entire um, diameter, which is gonna be double, 1.2 times two, double, is gonna be 2.4. So from here, once again, I can do the Pythagorean theorem. I can say 2.2 squared plus 2.4 squared is equal to DE squared. So 2.2 squared plus 2.4 squared is gonna give me 10.6, that is DE squared. Take the square root of 10.6, and I'm going to get DE, which is approximately 3.26. So if this is 3.26 and OE is 1.84, to find the total length of the tube, so total length of the tube, I'm basically just gonna have to add these two together, 3.26 
plus 1.84. So 3.26 plus 1.84 is going to give me a final answer of 5.1 meters. And that is my final answer. I hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more help with math so that you can say, yes, I can do math with confidence. Until next time, thanks for watching.